You are listening to Did You Hear, the Johnson County Library's podcast, and this is your library insider. Uh, insider. <laughs> First mistake right off the bat, live. Hi, I'm Dave Carson. There's going to be lots of those. Um, and thank you for being so brave. Um, today's episode, we have uh, a few different people that are going to be dropping in. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the social media of the library during the COVID-19 era, what the Makerspace folks are doing, and also we're going to talk to a librarian about what it's like when the library building is closed. How do you be a librarian? Uh, folks are going to be joining shortly, but first, our weekly word. Normally, that would be... Um, Oh, that would be uh, Jamal Lang, but he's not here in studio. And the studio, by the way, is one of my <laughs> rooms in my tiny, tiny little Overland Park house, uh, broadcasting live north of old downtown Overland Park. But today's weekly word is experiment, a procedure undertaken to make a discovery test a hypothesis or demonstrate a known fact. Other similar words are test, investigation, trial, inquiry, demonstration, examination. You know, that's exactly what we're doing here today. We're trying to do a live podcast. And so we'll see if this works. Um, Amy, are you available? Hello, I'm here, Dave. Hey, welcome. I'm so glad. Um, I've noticed... Uh, <laughs> Some of our other guests, um, I see them in the live studio. Oh, here comes Becky. Hold on just a second. Like I said, this is an experiment. Becky, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. It's Yay. so good to hear you. Um, and <laughs> it's good to hear you. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if we're able to get Thomas online as well. But welcome to you both. Oh, here comes Thomas. Oh my gosh, this is the excitement of a live podcast. Hello, Thomas. <laughs> we all are trickling in. <laughs> are you available, Thomas? Hi. Hi. Okay, well, I was just telling um, all of the listeners, and by the way, I can see how many listeners there are, and uh, there are three. <laughs> <laughs> and and those three happen to be you guys. So um, no pressure here. <laughs> no pressure here whatsoever. But uh, like I was setting, setting uh, up the whole premise for this show is that this is an experiment. We've never done a live podcast before. Um, so exciting. It is. Uh, and, you know, lots of learning and um, – Hopefully it all goes well, but uh, like I was saying, we're, we're hoping to talk about social media in the COVID-19 era. We also want to check in with our Makerspace facilitators to see, uh, just to get an update. They've been doing such amazingly great things in the fight against COVID. And then we're going to talk to Becky, who we're not going to oversell just how hilarious she is. Thank you. That's too much pressure. <laughs> I'm having but, performance anxiety. <laughs> okay. Well, this is kind of free form. I mean, I, I would like to, you know, do those three segments, but feel free to join the conversation. Um, I, I think that uh, our normal co-host, Melissa Horak Hearn, is unable to join us today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, you know, she'll be back next week. Okay, well, let's start with you, Amy. So when we had the stay-at-home order, uh, how did your life change as far as dealing with social media? Sure. So um, among other things, I do social media for the Johnson County Library. And so I'm used to checking, you know, our Twitter and our Facebook, Facebook and our Instagram accounts, um, pretty often throughout the day and posting. Um, the difference is we've seen about a 200% increase in terms of reach and engagement on our social media posts. And that's because people 
in general are spending more time on social media. That's how they're connecting with their friends. That's how they're looking for entertainment. Um, so we've definitely seen an increase, which has been really exciting for me. Um, I've been answering a lot more messages, questions from patrons about all kinds of things, the normal sort of troubleshooting their account or looking for a book recommendation type things, but also questions about, you know, do we know when the library will open? Um, yeah. Will we offer drive through service at some point? All of those questions related to our stay in sure. order, of course, have um, they've been coming in pretty frequently. So I've been busy chatting with lots of patrons um, on social media like that. And yeah, um, and it, it, Amy, isn't it? Thing that's, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Well, I, I, I was going to just mention, I was just going to mention something that I, I haven't worked at the library forever, but um, it's been 13 years. And when I first started working at the library, when you would go into our admin area, there was a big desk and we had a library receptionist and uh, oh. <laughs> and uh, she ran the switchboard, you know, it's like Johnson County Library, how may I direct your call? And what a different world now with the social media. And, and I, I find it uh, to be like the, the chosen route for communication for a lot of people. It's like, I'm just going to tweet them or I'm going to send a message through Facebook. Um, that's my little observation. <laughs> Take it or yeah, leave it. I love I love the switchboard <laughs> memory. Um, I was going to mention another thing that's been a change for me is I have a few more librarians helping me out being social media contributors for us um, because some of the normal duties that our librarians perform um, we're not able to do right now. For instance, we're not transferring holds from library to library for patrons. So some of those duties have um, temporarily been put on, on hold. Haha. Uh -huh. Um, and so we have some more people helping us out on social. And that's been really great to collaborate with other people um, and allow other people to see the fun that I get to have on social media with our patrons. Yeah, that, that is fantastic. Um, well, uh, hold on. Let's, let's do this. I'm going to put in trans transition music uh, to go to the next piece. What do you think of that? Isn't that awful? <laughs> so, it's awfully good. When I, when I came into the Podbean Live uh, interface, it's like, oh, you can choose your music. I was like, oh, so I can upload my music that we use for a regular show? No, 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 no. I have to, <laughs> I have to use the music that they have. And so here's Swingy Jazz. Here's Flying to Infinity. Here's introspection. <laughs> and electric sunny vibes. <laughs> okay, electric, uh, enough of that. Um, I, I also have a, a, like an arsenal of uh, sound effects, so check this out. And, and, I uh, of this podcast having a laugh track. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so this is how I'll do this. So, um, we'll bring in our next guest, and that is a makerspace facilitator, Thomas Malu. Yay! <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey, how's it going, man? Oh, oh my so, gosh! So good. So what's what's the update? What what all are you doing there in the makerspace now? So we've we've been working hard, all of us, uh, since the uh, libraries closed in March. Uh, we yeah. makers in general are problem solvers, and even if these are uh, difficult times, um, you know you can't take the makers out of the makerspace. Yeah, but you can't take. To make a space out of the makers. So each right. of us, uh, the four of us, Angelica, Brian, Nick, and myself, uh, just went to work and tried to figure out, each in our corner at first, uh, what could we do to support our community in these times? Uh, that was, I think, mid-March. And then just a few days after, when we were able to get back in touch together, 
uh, we realized that we had all been uh, working on the same problems, uh -huh. um, trying to find uh, different solutions. We pulled all that together, tested a lot of stuff, and since um, mid to late March, the uh, Makerspace team has been cranking out face masks, uh, including with the help of volunteer JCL staff. We have been cranking out face shields. We have helped um, helped some local um, fire department staff uh, figure out some extra equipment for, them for themselves, um, 3D printing stuff around the clock, uh, cutting fabric and making masks around the clock. It's been an adventure. Yeah. Can we talk numbers? I mean, do you have them or... or... Like, like, how many masks did you all end up producing? Of course. So the numbers keep changing because this is still sure. going on, of course. But uh, Angelica and Nick uh, supervise the uh, um, face, uh, face masks effort at first. And they put together a bunch of kits for staff to make masks and then um, shared their own research on how to make the best, best masks with what we have around the house. At the last count that I got... The uh, uh, we had contributed anywhere between 600 and 700 face masks. Wow. <laughs> See what I did there? And that number is probably out of date already anyway. Oh, wow. That's, and, and what about visors? Uh, face shields, uh, there was a little more research needing to go into it. So uh -huh. we, um, we, made, we wanted to make sure if we committed the uh, time and resources, not just of the library, but other places like, um, for example, the uh, Juco uh, Makerspace 3D printers, which we are hosting at the library Makerspace right now. We wanted to make sure if we created something that it was going to be something useful. So we needed a little more time to uh, research the correct face shields to make, to find the correct uh, materials, unexpected materials sometimes to make these face shields. But uh, we delivered about 80 of them last week to uh, Johnson County Emergency Medical Services. And we have a little under, a little over 160 completed and ready to go and about 260 more waiting to be assembled. Wow. And especially since, um, you know, there's talk about reopening the economy and all of that. And there's going to be a lot of people, uh, you know, in contact with each other's and they're expecting there to be, you know, some some further outbreak. And I'm sure that those uh, pr protective items are absolutely needed. Oh, there well, will be for sure. And uh, yeah. on top of all that, the uh, research that went into it, uh, no, of course, we are we have a really nice printing farm going on at the library right now and in other, all other places across the U.S. and across the world. But even if all these printers together uh, can't be enough to, say, provide a whole hospital system with all the equipment they would need, they would at least be able to supplement these systems or supplement what people need in the community until the industrial production kicks in. It's really all about finding the little gaps where the maker community can help and provide that help and then move on to the next best thing then do to take care of our community. Wow. Well, thank you so much for doing that. Thanks for the update. You know, um, if the Did You Hear podcast had uh, merit badges to hand out, Amy, I would like to give you the social media uh, special uh, merit badge. And Thomas, you get the Makerspace uh, merit badge. You guys have really uh, helped the library out a ton during these uncertain times. So um, thank you very much. Hey, uh, it's all about thank teamwork. You for the imaginary merit badge. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You get an imaginary, it's a vocal merit badge. <laughs> So Becky, uh, yes. tell tell us, you know, can't it's 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 almost like a philosophical question. If if uh, a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Well, so if a librarian doesn't have a library building to go to, can they do their thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what thing is that? <laughs> I'm going to be the worst interviewee you've ever had. <laughs> yeah, just answer yes or no to all the questions. <laughs> well, can I ask Thomas a question first? Oh, absolutely. Is Thomas still on here? Yeah, did you yeah. Did you call it a printing farm? I did. 
Yeah. But what is a printing farm? I'm like imagining like old McDonald and like that kind of stuff. That's so cool. No. <laughs> it's a few words for all. <laughs> this is too far. I might on my notes. So does that just mean like a bunch of printers working at the same time? That's exactly it. Okay. Okay. I just like that term. That's hilarious. I love it for the same so, reason. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm working from home and um, it's, I don't want to be too like, Hey, everything's so rosy, but it's, I'm so fortunate that I, I get to do my job from home. And so it, a lot of what I do translate, translates really well to, you know, doing things online or, you know, communicating through different things. And I, you know, I, I'm surprised by how much work I do have to do. So like when we, if I can be frank, when we first, started this I was like what am I gonna do you know and I was like like I I just can't even because I I can't stand to not be busy and so I was like trying to think of all these things to do and I have never and I work eight hours a day you know and I've never finished a day where I I felt like I got everything done I had intended to do I I leave the day still having more to do so yeah, I know yeah, I, I, like, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Same. It's it's kind of weird. Like I I didn't expect it at all. Yeah, and I I think part of it is um, I feel like I'm more busy than ever, and I think part of it is definitely um, that uh, there's some learning for using new communication software. Oh yeah, I've, I've had to learn new software packages altogether. I normally use a Mac, but Exactly. At home, I'm using a PC. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got to say one of our guests. I'm guessing Thomas, or maybe it's Amy. Somebody sounds like you're opening cans and cooking up beans. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. You have a very sensitive why would, microphone. <laughs> why would you assume it's not me? Why can't I be the one cooking beans? <laughs> would you like to know what I'm doing? Sure. <laughs> so, and that figures very well into what uh, Becky is talking about because I'm actually doing something uh, vaguely related to the uh, on- online programs. Yeah. So the Makerspace team has been looking at uh, equipment they need to run online programs and bring the uh-huh. audience back in. Uh-huh. Uh, what we realized is we would need um, microphones we can wear with us, like headsets, instead of just using a, a webcam microphone or something like that. So I had been looking around to buy uh, a headset we could use for our workshops. And then I was looking at the uh, delivery times and I was like, that's going to take too long. So right now I am taking apart a pair of microphones to turn them into a wireless headset. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah, we, we have heard some very talented yeah, people. Your first guess. Yeah, really. <laughs> Why did you just go directly to beans and not? <laughs> yeah, tell us more about that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, maybe I'm hungry. I don't know. <laughs> so, Becky. um, you know, Becky, it it is an interesting segue about uh, you know, online programming. So, are you participating in some of the new online programming that we're doing? I am. Yeah. yeah I tell us, tell us what you're doing. It's so cool. Um. We have been, we have a team of people, and Amy and Thomas are on it um, too. And we're doing Facebook Live story times. I'm a I'm a youth services librarian, and so um, I'm doing story times. But people in the adult services are doing what they call book parties, where they talk about books and stuff. And Really? So yeah. So we're we're using Facebook Live right now, and I don't. I I think eventually we might do some other things too. But like Amy was saying earlier, she you know Amy is our our Facebook guru, and we already had that platform lined up 
for the library. And so it was a little bit easier for us to do story times and yeah. parties using oh, Facebook for sure. Live. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and since you mentioned uh, Amy, um, Becky, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come right back to you. But sure. I know that Amy has some initiatives uh, for an online program that she wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you have for us, Amy? Yeah. So um, one of the big new things we've been doing on uh, social media, on Facebook, like Becky was saying, is some Facebook live programming. We've got story times um, many mornings of the week and one, at least for right now, one evening in the week. Um, we've also got uh, what our adult services folks are calling book parties, um, which is one of our um, librarians talks about some genre or some type of book um, or audio book that they're excited about. So it's a great time to get a lot of new reading recommendations or listening recommendations. Um, and we're focusing on e items. So ebooks, e audiobooks, um, streaming movies, the types of services that our patrons can get right now from home. Um, so those are a, a couple of great programs we've launched. We've also got some career and finance programs, makerspace programs, and virtual author visits in the works um, over the next month or so. And then I imagine it'll only keep growing over the summer. So I'm so excited about that, especially since we're starting out on uh, Facebook Live, which um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm in charge of that platform for the library. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to mention, um, just because it was so successful on Facebook, is um, many of our librarians wrote messages to their patrons on pieces of paper and held them up and took a selfie. And we posted a whole bunch of these and we've got almost a thousand likes or wow. loves <laughs> on that post and all the individual pictures. So if you want to read some messages from some of the faces that you're missing, <laughs> um, you can look for that post um, on our Facebook page. It was posted on April 24th. So a few, a few um, posts back and, uh, just know that we're missing your faces as well. <laughs> and it was really great for our librarians to, to write those signs and get to pass along a message to all of the patrons that we're missing so much. Ah. So um, keep talking for a moment. I'm copying the uh, link to the video because we, we went ahead and took um, all yes. of those, those photos and we made a short video and I'm putting that into our online chat right now. So have a look at that if you'd like. Awesome. So well, I'll mention one other thing uh, quickly then while you're doing that. Okay. Um, la oh, we started online trivia. Um, we're posting a couple of trivia games every week and you can find those on our Facebook or our Instagram at Choco Library. And uh, last week it was just general adult book trivia. It was a hard quiz. I didn't write the yes. quiz. I took the quiz <laughs> and I did not do very well. <laughs> oh, really? And I like to think of myself as pretty knowledgeable. Um, the, uh, the first week's winners were Liza and Ruth. So we have um, the online handles of the folks who win. We're going to be congratulating them every week. And then our new quizzes are, uh, we have a movie quiz and we have a young adult book quiz. So look for those and have a little fun with us online. Oh, oh very good. So uh, let's go back to, to Becky. Um, so beyond the uh, book party, are you involved in any other programming or if not? Well, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, that's all right. I'm I'm actually not in the book party. I'm just watching them because You're they're watching, so okay. good. Yeah. yeah, I watched one with um, my colleague Melody. She talked about uh, addiction memoirs, which sounds incredibly sad, but it was it was like I was sitting in her living room and she was hosting this amazing party. So it it was really her cool. Beautiful living room. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> so and jealous. yeah. Um, but I get, I'm one of the, uh, I think there are, I can't remember how many of us, I think there's 14 of us total of the team that's doing the online story times. And so um, I got to do one this morning. We each have a certain day that we do it. And like Amy was saying, it's all on Facebook Live at 10 a.m. And then we have one set at six on Wednesdays. 
um, so far. And it's different, different story time leaders doing it. And so I'm partnered with uh, Ms. Christie from the Antioch Library, and I normally work at the Oak Park Library where I do story time, but since we can't physically be there, we're bringing them into our patrons' living rooms, and it's been an amazing way to connect with our young patrons and also their parents and caregivers, and um, they can leave while we're doing a story time live, they can leave comments and share that we've had some patrons share pictures of their kids engaging with us. And it's, it's been just so amazing to be able to still get to see our, our story time families that way. So it's yeah. a lot of fun. That, that, that is, that's, that's really great, Becky. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I noticed that. Uh, to watch all of those story times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Our story time programs, right? Exactly. I, I it's so I funny because watching. we get to watch each other perform too. And, yes. and I have learned so much in the last couple of weeks of testing and then actually doing the story times from my colleagues who are doing that. I'm oh, they do Itsy Bitsy Spider that way. I do it this way. You know, it just, <laughs> it, it, you would not realize there are so many ways to do Itsy Bitsy Spider. So I have well, to tell you with, um, I, I used to be many moons ago in youth services. And uh -huh. I used to do story times and it's been uh, five or six years since then. Uh -huh. But I was watching one of our online story times. Um, it was one with Miss Grace. Uh -huh. and she sings the same goodbye song that I used to sing. And I totally started cheering <laughs> up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really, I got into doing, because I, I really cannot sing very well. I can't carry a tune. And, but I feel like my, my whole, and we do a lot of singing in story time, but my whole thing is we're here to show parents and caregivers that it's just important to sing with your kids. It's one of the best early literacy skills you can provide. Whether or not you think you can sing, they don't care, you know, yeah. and uh, I used to take, I used to go to story time when I was a little kid and mm -hmm. I remember my story time library and she was seriously like my idol. I thought she, I totally fangirled over my story time library when I was a girl. And then I took my daughter to story times at the library and then she got too old to go. She started going to school and I was like, well, <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? You know, they won't let a grown up go to story time. So by themselves. So I got to join youth services and start leading story times. And it's just amazing how these, these songs get stuck in your head from, I mean, I'm, I'm 49. And I remember like somebody will start singing a song and I'm like, oh, I remember singing that when I was five, you know, and, <laughs> and it's, it's really, it's amazing how um, we do pass stories down from generation to generation through singing and and through these oral ways of storytelling and it's just it's 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 very very rewarding so yeah so uh to to reset for everyone um we are the johnson county library this is the did you hear podcast and we have Amy, uh, who represents our social media for the library. We have Thomas, who is a makerspace facilitator. And Becky, who is a YS librarian. YS means youth services librarian. Yep. And uh, um, this is this is all good stuff. Uh, do you all have a favorite, uh, you know, uh, story or song from childhood? Because I, I, I remember Bear Hunt. Is that still one they do? Or is that oh, like, yeah. <laughs> have actually, going on a bear hunt. Dave, you and I kind of have the same taste in music. Do you know Billy Bragg? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, well, he did. He's got a thing on Facebook, and I think it's on YouTube also, where he he um, turned that book into a song oh, that he wow. sings for his daughter. And it's it's just really cool. Yeah, yeah that's really you said that you, you you're not a good singer, but that guy sure is. So oh <laughs> that's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. yeah, pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. 
What, what, what about you, Amy? Do you have a favorite uh, childhood song or, or story that you remember from story time? I, I do. Um, I, it's funny that you should mention this, actually, because I've been gardening over the past couple of days, getting lots of seedlings and uh, sprouts planted. And Neat. the song that suddenly came into my head while I was gardening is from my childhood, uh, from The Muppet Show, yeah, it's in Denver, and it's called the Garden <gasps> Song, and it just got in my head as I was planting things. And I would definitely lose my mind if a Storytime librarian sung that in their story time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's a favorite for sure. I, I know it may be Denver. too embarrassing. I, what 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 are the chances that we can get you to sample it? <laughs> can I pull up John Denver really quickly? Yeah, yeah, laptop? you could if you want. But I I I don't know what it sounds like. I don't know how it goes. You know, it's nuts, Amy. I live with my mother-in-law and she has a 12 string guitar that she got like in the sixties when she was a kid. And she learned to play that kind of guitar because of John Denver. And he's like one of her, he is one of her favorite people. And so, you know, if you ever want to hear some John Denver, I will put my (laughs) mother-in-law on. So that is so wholesome. <laughs> I know. And she's the what she made she made a sock puppet for us that we used in story time today which you can actually we usually delete the story time videos off of Facebook because they have Copyright, books that yeah. we're reading exactly. True. But the one that we did this morning it's all public domain songs so we were able to just leave it on Facebook. So if you want to go yeah, on there cool. and look at my mother-in-law's puppet and then pretend that she's singing John Denver, then that would be cool. Oh, that's so like cool. You. And I can play yeah. you a tiny sample of the garden okay. song if you would like. All right, here we go. Let me turn on my volume. <laughs> I remember this. Oh, that's great. Oh, it's so great. Definitely, uh, <laughs> if you look up the garden song John Denver on YouTube, you'll have a very 80s flashback. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, oh, and his hair. <laughs> oh, wow. And so that, that goes through your head while you're gardening, huh? It does. It just popped. I hadn't thought of it in years, and it just popped into my head while I was planting oh. my uh, my onions and my radishes. And is it is it just a little zen experience for you then? Just total yeah, happiness. Very zen. <laughs> yes. That's nice. Inch by inch. <laughs> okay. Uh, so see, Dave's talk- singing now. We need to get Dave on yeah. story time now. Oh yeah, I will rock the MIC. Um, no, we're yeah. not going to go there. Hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, so. Thomas, um, did you grow up in France? Absolutely, yeah. So do they have story times for children in France? They probably do, although I got to say, I never went. Oh, ah. sorry. We would have inst- oh, no worries. Hey, I get it. I, you know, <laughs> sometimes I stop, I walk past the, uh, the big room where we do story time at Central Resorts, and it's pretty adorable. Yeah. Yeah. But- uh, we would actually do that. Uh, I didn't go to the library once. I went to the ones, of course, in kindergarten. Uh, and that was pretty cool. I don't remember many of the songs, but I think you, um, in the U.S., there's a few uh, American versions, like Brother Peter, stuff like that. What was that? Um, Frère Jacques, for us, Frère is Brother Jacques, Peter. Frère yeah. Jacques. Yes. Yeah. Also, um, something that I was doing something completely unrelated and like Amy, I had something pop in my head. That was actually baby shark. Uh, <laughs> baby shark <laughs> as it turns out is an early 20th century campfire song. Yes, it really? is. Oh, I was blown oh, away by that. It's been I around forever. Huh. It is not a K-pop song. It is. They <laughs> took it from campfire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, you know, the thing that really blows me away about story time is that, you know, when I was a kid, it was just story time. It's like you're you're uh, probably right before the age of uh, kindergarten, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but but now we have 
baby story time. Oh yeah. Toddler story time, regular old story time. Am I missing any of the other story times? Um, uh, well, family. when we're, yeah, yeah. when we're, ELL go ahead. Also. Baby oh, boomer yeah, story uh, <laughs> time. story time. <laughs> That'd be great. Gen X story should. time. <laughs> we should have an, an adult swim story time where we I just love it. sing a bunch I of love great it. songs. Like, um, it's uncensored and raw. Yeah. <laughs> Gen X. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, when we're when the library is open, the story times we have are baby, which is, you know, for zero to about 18 months. And then we also have mother goose rhyme time, which is between baby and toddler. So it's for, it's really designed for those kids that cannot sit still long enough for a book, you know, because they're toddlers and they're moving around. That's that's what they do. And then we have toddler and then preschool and then family is just sort of flexible for everybody. And then we'll have evening family and bilingual story time, like Amy was saying. So we have a bunch. But right now, because it's all on Facebook Live, it's it's just sort of a family story time. It's, you know, whoever wants to join, it's designed to be flexible and, and not for a yeah. certain group. Yeah. And and. How how great is that? And I hope it's something that will continue because, you know, as um, I don't want to say a former parent, I'm still a parent, but my, yeah. my daughter is college age now. But, yeah. you know, uh, your your schedule for a, a, a family is so busy and to yes. squeeze in time for anything, sometimes this is impossible, but to have something that, you know, oh, I don't have to leave the house for occasionally, right. that's a nice option. Um, but uh, yeah, it. It's turned into this kind of opportunity that fell into our laps because it was a necessity, you know, like we never did online story time before because we didn't have the capacity. We were busy doing in-person story times, but now because we're at home and we can't do in-person, we get to do online. And so I would love for us to figure out a way to do both when we do reopen. Um, But, you know, that's, that's just going to be something we have to figure out, but you're right. It's, it's wonderful for, and also accessibility. Not every single person can come into the library very easily. And so it's, it's a way for those people to be able to enjoy our story times and and our other online programs as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think that that is a good place to start wrapping things up. And so I should tell people that, um, you know, Amy is uh, our guru for our social media channel, and so uh, that can be found at uh, facebook.com slash Joko Library, but not just there, Amy, right? What are some other uh, social media outreach that we have? That's right. We've got on Instagram, we have both a Joko Library account and a Joko Makerspace account. Both of those are awesome. Uh, Twitter at Joko Library. Um, and like Dave mentioned, Facebook at Joko Library. <laughs> I think I'm going to smile for that. Not, not entirely Amy, sure how to make that stop, but <laughs> Amy, the I think Elementia has is it its own Instagram account or does it use oh, yes. the libraries? Okay. Um, it is. Ha- it does have its own Instagram. Thank okay. you for reminding me of that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and to let handle. Yeah, to let our our listeners know, Elementia is our uh, young adult is, uh, yeah, publication our... for the arts and literature. Yes. And it's yes. it's got national recognition. It's a high quality publication for sure. We're yep. really proud yes. of it. And our new um, digital issue just released um, yes. a couple of weeks ago. So you can enjoy that. And their Instagram handle is joko.elementia, E-L-E-M-E-N-T-I-A. Mm-hmm. Very good. And so then, uh, Thomas, thank you for coming in to give us an update about the um, Makerspace and uh, folks that want to just visit the Makerspace page, that's jokolibrary.org slash Makerspace. And while we don't have hours right now, you can take a look at some of the wonderful equipment that we have, 3D printing, computers and software, electronics, uh, AV equipment, sewing, laser cutting, CNC cutting, vinyl cutting. 
We've also got a really super cool Matterport tour of the uh, makerspace. So it's so much better than just like a 360 uh, view of the makerspace. You can pop in there, move around, and uh, there's some little pop-ups uh, that tell you about the different equipment. But, you know, it's so cool because it's interactive and you can really see where you work, Thomas. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. You have, you have any uh, recommendations for us, uh, what we should be doing or making while we're at home? Um, just do whatever makes you happy these days. Uh, be able to just to grab something, whatever you have lying around, fabric scraps, cardboard. I love to play with cardboard, paper, and just making something with your hands is a great way to just feel accomplished and feel a little more <laughs> and feel creative. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty important these days. Um, yeah. Look forward to, since we were talking uh, about Facebook Live online programs, look forward to some of our upcoming programs because uh, we are going to, uh, the Makerspace is going to join the uh, online programs fund very soon as well. Yay. And uh, hopefully not just with our beginner's night, we hope to uh, bring in our presenters as well. And uh, above all else, keep in mind, because that's something important for makers, we always feel like we need to be making something. These are tough times. Don't feel bad if you don't feel like not doing anything. Just take that time to do some self-care, relax a little bit if you can, and just get back into it whenever you feel like you're in the right place. Very good. All right. Well, Becky, you have the last word. Um, do you have any recommendations for us? It could be anything that you've been watching, anything that you've been reading, or anything that we should be doing just to treat ourselves a little bit better, like Thomas is suggesting. Yeah. Um, I highly recommend singing with children as much as you can, even if you don't have a kid in your house, like if you could call them or, you know, do a video chat with them. There is this amazing thing about singing with little kids that it just makes you realize that how precious life is and it it makes you feel like there's some good in the world and we really need that, you know, plus it's just, it's passing down traditions in a really fun way. So, you know, go and, and watch some of our story times and then practice at home or call your little kid friends or whatever. So, yeah. Well, I want to thank you all so very much for calling in today and being part of our little experiment having, did you hear live, uh, Amy, thank you. Becky, thank you. Thomas, and thank until you. next time, this is uh, Did You Hear? Be well, everyone. Thank you.